Coming up. I can do this whole bowl. And in fact, I just might. Join me in the kitchen for a quick, simple and healthy recipe centered around chickpeas and sweet potato. Then I'll help you break down your 2021 resolutions into bite-sized, achievable steps to keep your health on track. We'll also look back at fun moments throughout SoFlo Health history that show you health is more than workouts and food. All of that and more today on SoFlo Health. Hello and welcome to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie and we're on South Beach on Ocean Drive. And typically when I'm on Ocean Drive, I'm on the sidewalk, but they've shut down the road to give more space for outdoor dining for the local restaurants, which some people seem to be attending. And there are very few people here on South Beach compared to what we're usually seeing this time of year because of the lack of tourism. However, we hope you come on down here during the summertime and show off your new fitness that you learn here on SoFlo Health, that you do at home, the workouts you might enjoy with Morgan, but first, you have to watch out what's coming up in two days. In two days is National Quitters Day, and some say that today is National Ditch New Year's Resolutions Day. Who comes up with these days anyway? Nonetheless, some 80% of people that set New Year's resolutions give up at some point during the year, most of which is around now. Others use this time of year to give up their resolutions guilt-free. What you do or don't do with your time is totally up to you. However, if you did set some resolutions around your health, don't give up just yet. Here on SoFlo Health, we encourage you to keep your health at the top of mind, and we also attempt to provide you with the tools to improve it. Follow me. One of the biggest reasons people don't follow through on their New Year's resolutions, or any goal for that matter, is because when it comes to achieving your goals, it's often better if you break it down into smaller parts, much like eating. So instead of eat healthier in 2021, maybe you start out with a healthier lunch during the weekdays and go from there. Then when that becomes a habit that's easy for you to follow, simply add something else if you'd like. Speaking of habits, don't be discouraged if your new habit hasn't taken into effect yet. It's only day 17 after all. There's a popular belief that it only takes 21 days for a new habit to take effect. And the truth is, it might, but it also might take 200 days. The idea that it takes 21 days for a new habit to form comes from the corruption of a 1950s study that suggests it takes a minimum of 21 days for a new habit to take place. And that's actually pretty congruent with newer research as well, which states that it takes somewhere between 18 and 254 days for a new habit, averaging to be around 66 days. What does that mean for you? Make your New Year's resolution or your goals simple and easy to follow. It's always easier to build up to something new and you're more likely to stick with something that's simple and easy than that's daunting and not so easy to follow along with. So if you want to make a massive change, break it down into smaller parts and don't just take on one big change. However, if you do take on that one big change, more power to you. There are no rules here. It's like Nietzsche says, he who has a why can bear almost any how. Make sure you ask yourself, how can I go about achieving my health goals? Break it up into smaller parts like we did with the apple. And if you veer off course, just hop back on. In fact, I know one way that you can get closer to your health goals right now, and that's to stay here and keep watching SoFlo Health. See, these people haven't given up yet. Well, yet being the key word. Now, when it comes to being healthier, a lot of people complain that the food is the difficult part. They say that healthy food doesn't taste good, it's too expensive, and it's too difficult to make. We disagree. In fact, we have a curried chickpea and sweet potato recipe for you that's so good, you'll think it's bad for you. We are back in the kitchen with another healthy recipe for the new year. Our previous recipe is to my right, the black bean avocado salad. It was absolutely delicious. In fact, I might eat those while we're doing this. But first, today we're making curried chickpeas and sweet potatoes, and that's exactly what we have in front of us. Here I have some sweet potatoes that have been steamed. We've got chickpeas right out of a can that have been rinsed. They're also called garbanzo beans. And make sure that you're buying low sodium or no sodium if you can when it comes to your chickpeas. 
Then in front of us, we've got our different spices. This is minced ginger. Next to that, we have our apple cider vinegar. We have minced garlic. We have no salt vegetable seasoning. And then we have our curry powder. You can use whatever you like. This one specifically has no salt. Are you seeing the theme here? There's not a whole lot of salt in this because we want you to be able to add as much or as little salt as you want for A, taste, and B, health. Or maybe A, health, and B, taste. You decide on that one. And then we also have some vegetable stock. You can use chicken stock or whatever stock you prefer. And then we have one yellow onion that's been diced up here. This whole recipe should take about 30 minutes to create from the very beginning of chopping and steaming, getting everything ready, to actually cooking it. But lucky for you, we're going to do it in just three minutes. So let's get started. In a large saucepan, heat up the water, or in our case, vegetable broth. Then stir in the garlic, ginger, curry powder, vegetable seasoning, and onions. Add a little more liquid if it dries out, then cover and simmer for five minutes or until the onions are soft. Then add the chickpeas and some more liquid if needed. Mix it up until all of the spices are incorporated and once everything is heated, add your sweet potato and apple cider vinegar, stirring to combine everything. Again, add some more broth or water if it feels too dry. There we go, nice and hot. Curried sweet potatoes and chickpea. I'm gonna wait to get a bite of it, here we go. Try not to torch my mouth in the process. Health tip, blow on the hot food before taking a bite of it. That's delicious. I can eat this whole bowl, and in fact, I just might. If you happen to make this at home yourself and you enjoy it, send us a picture using at SoFloHealth on Instagram or Facebook. We'd love to see what you make, how you adjust it to make it your own. Something else you can add here is cilantro, a little parsley on top for some garnish, or you could throw in some red peppers if you have them available to you, but we didn't have those today. All right, I'll see you next time. I'm going to eat this now, so I don't know what you're waiting for. When SoFlow Health returns, Morgan stretch for a problematic lower back and the hottest healthy activity we could find. Focusing on you. Innovations in modern medicine. From your team of experts at U Health, the University of Miami Health System. I'm good, 99.87. That's, that's pretty good. Marilyn Diaz is taking her temperature as part of a clinical trial she enrolled in for a COVID-19 vaccine. I did it because I wanted uh, to see a cure. I wanted to see an end to COVID. Dr. Olvin Carasquillo, Chief of General Internal Medicine at UHealth, says we need more people like Marilyn to volunteer, not only for COVID-19 studies, but other clinical trials aimed at curing other diseases. I think what COVID has made it clear the importance of having people uh, participate in research studies. The fact that we have vaccines in less than a year was not possible without the hundreds of thousands of people that volunteered for clinical trials. That's why UHealth is launching a new user-friendly website called UMiamiHealthResearch.org. Explains it in very simple, plain language what the study's about. Many people are looking to enroll, and it'll have some of the specific criteria what they're looking for. There are ongoing trials for diabetes, heart disease, cancer, mental health, pediatrics, and much more. It's really important that we take people from all races, all ethnicities, all income levels, all educational levels. Marilyn doesn't know yet if she got the actual vaccine or a placebo. Either way, she's happy to help move science forward. I think it is our duty to come forward and to help others. If you want to look your best by summer, you better start now. And if you have lower back pain, that might get in the way. Welcome back to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and before the pandemic began, Morgan showed us a simple lower back stretch to help ease that lower back pain and, more importantly, help repair it. It's important because if you don't do that, it's going to be difficult to reach your other fitness goals, so pay close attention, and I'm going to enjoy the view. We're here in Miami Beach with Morgan, Danielle, and Orestes. Morgan, what do you have for us today? So today, I want to take a second to talk about a problem that 80% of Americans suffer from lower back pain. This is something that all of us are constantly dealing with and it's actually quite easy to get. Driving in the car, you favor one side, talking on the phone, holding the baby. Sometimes we don't even realize we do it. And the good thing is, is I have a simple solution. So what happens is a muscle in our lower back, deep in there, gets really tight. It actually attaches to your bottom rib 
and the top of your hip. So we're gonna do a simple stretch to help alleviate that pain. Great. So I want you guys to take your right leg, put it behind your left, and reach up and over with that right hand, lengthening that whole side. If you have some tightness there, you'll feel you'll feel it loosening up real good. Yeah, got a little pop there. Good, hold that for a few seconds, then coming over and switching sides, bringing that left leg behind that right and up and over with that hand. Good job stretching it out, thinking to lengthen that muscle. Good job, guys. Awesome. Woo. Feels good. Thanks, Morgan. We hope you were able to follow along at home. Here's more SoFlo Health. My back still feels better from that stretch, but it only works if you actually do the stretch. That's how you get the result. Something else we like to do here on SoFlow Health is find interesting ways to go out and get some extra movement in. And before the pandemic, we did so with a place where you can lift metal rods, use heat, use breath control. It's, well, take a look. Can you believe that this is made out of glass, that's made out of glass, everything's made out of glass. Brenna, where are we and how is all of this made? We are at Hollywood Hot Glass in Young Circle. We specialize in offering classes here. I've been working with glass personally for 16 years, but we are here to give the experience to the community and learn the ancient art of glass blowing. What inspired you to bring glass blowing to the public? The classes have always been so rewarding because it's such a fun thing to do and everybody loves it and we found a way to make it safe, fun and easy. We have 10 different options to choose from. You can see some are very sculptural, like the flower. We also do a starfish, ruffle bowl, tumbler, vase, any age really from four years old and up can inflate the glass. Four years old and up. Yeah, eight years old and up can shape the glass, but we also do a lot of like nursing home, senior citizen group events and right. birthday parties for any age. Date nights are a lot right. of fun. Because it's kind of a therapeutic process, too. Yeah, exactly. That's very cool. Well, now, do you think that I could handle something like this? Yeah, please. We'd love to have you do it. <laughs> All right, who do we have here that can show me how? Richard, our instructor. Richard? Yep. I'm going to go find pro. Richard. Okay. All right? Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, Richard. Oh, hey, Hunter. <laughs> What's up, dude? I see you're admiring your own work. It's glass. Everyone loves to admire this that. This is the hot glass class. Welcome to the hot glass class. So, we're going to start with the tumbler. That's going to be our blown form. We're actually going to put our breath into the piece. For the tumbler, we're gonna pick up to three colors. All right, well, uh, I think I'll use these three here and we'll get started. Okay. Yeah, let's do the thing. Blown forms start with a blow pipe. Okay. This is basically like our big metal straw we're gonna use to blow the bubble into <laughs> the piece. You're gonna take over turning okay. right here, hands on the pipe. Okay, let's see if it's hot enough. We'll pull it back out. All right. Oh, check out that orange glow. Whoa, Whoa that's hot. That's crazy. In here is where we keep all the molten material, just over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you look down the pipe, you can see it spooling on the end of it. There's our molten glass. And now in this molten state, we can apply the color. All we have to do, just tap it right in. Bring the pipe up to your mouth. Okay. Before you go on, lick your lips to provide a seal, then use your cheeks to provide the pressure. Go ahead. Start out as soft as you can. We want a nice, soft, consistent pressure. After a few trips to and from the furnace, extra shaping techniques, and more blowing, it's time to put the finishing touches on the tumbler. It's now nice and cool and separate from that little piece, so we give it a little tap, pops right off. <laughs> and once it cools down, all those colors will come out way brighter. We're just gonna put it away to cool. So this is what the final product would look like for you at home when you give this a shot. So Richard, thank you very much. Thank you, honey. Thank you to everyone here, and you gotta give it a shot. Don't race off just yet. We take a look back at when we hit the track and the ice after the break. Welcome back to South Beach and to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and on today's episode, we've been encouraging you to stick to your goals and showing you what it's been like on SoFlow Health, even pre-pandemic, because our idea of health includes many different things that you might not expect. And that includes something that might get your heart rate up, like a race, but not necessarily on foot. And it's hard for the average guy to find a race car around here, but you can get pretty close at K1 speed. Take a look. I'm here at K1 speed in Hollywood, and I'm ready to race. All you need is a head sock to keep these helmets clean, and then the helmet. Get a two minute crash course on the flags and what they mean, 
and that's it. You're ready to race. Well, I'm ready to race. Here's Mick from K1 Speed to tell you more about it. It's a family fun uh, entertainment center. We have uh, go-karts that reach up to 45 mile an hour with zero emissions. Great way to relieve stress. Um, open for all ages, from kids to grandparents. Kids to grandparents, you can come race uh, your family members, talk trash along the way. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So tell me a little bit about the no emissions part of this. It's, uh, they're all electric carts? All electric carts, so there's zero emissions. Yeah. Fresh air, clean air. You don't have the fumes from the engines, you don't have the, the, the gas emissions that you normally have from the gas-powered carts. So, right. yeah, we're 100% clean. But let's be honest, if there's a health angle here, it's just fun, and fun's good for everyone. <laughs> what are some tips you could give me? Slow in, fast out. Slow in, fast out, that's what does that how, mean? That's how you take your corners. So you, you're basically gonna run the line of the track, mm -hmm. but as you're coming in, you take it out wide, going in slow, and then accelerate out. All right, great. Well, I'm gonna get on the track and race around a bit. Sounds good? Yeah. All right. Well, here we are, I'm ready to race. It's no fun to race by yourself. So I got Frank here, he's gonna race with me. We're gonna go around and see who can be the fastest. So I'm gonna buckle up and get ready to go. Hey Frank, wait up! Wow, that's a lot of fun. Oh, what an adrenaline rush. Oh, it's addicting. The more you do it, the more you're gonna to wanna to go around. And I'll tell you what, Mick at one point says, hey, do you wanna try full speed? Frank and I were like, full speed? And sure enough, 45 miles an hour on one of these things feels like a lot. Now, speaking of Frank, I don't know where he went. I think we'll find him. Oh. There's Frank. I guess this is where I go. And I guess this is for me. I'm gonna get you next time. For a large part of 2020, we saw the shutdown of sports. But as the year went on, it started to make a comeback, so we hope there's more of it in 2021. Some of the fittest athletes in the world are actually hockey players, and pre-pandemic, we had the opportunity to work with Ole Jokinen and Radic Dvorak at South Florida Hockey Academy. And now some of their students are prospective pro athletes themselves. So in honor of pro athletes getting back to normal and health throughout 2021, let's take a look at our time with them. That's Ole Okunen, former Florida Panther. After over 1,200 games in 19 seasons in the NHL, he's now creating an environment to produce well-rounded young hockey players on and off the ice. So Ole, tell me about South Florida Hockey Academy. How did it begin and uh, what was the inspiration behind it? Well, for me, it was, uh, I started thinking about around 2014 that what I'm going to do after, when I grow up, what I'm going to do after <laughs> I'm done playing hockey. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stay involved with the hockey, give my knowledge, what I learned over the years to the next generation. Before we started, uh, most of the good kids that when they turned 14, 15, their parents uh, needed to send them up north. So now with our academy, kids can finish the high school here. Do you have anything now or coming for people that are, are either new to hockey or just casual players and things like that? Yeah, we have something going on almost every week. If not every week, every other week. Right. Uh, so we have for beginners, the pro players, junior players. So we have basically from all the ages. You know, the only thing what's is missing that it's a uh, adult learn to skate. Which right. we actually looking to put in uh, once uh, once the fall season starts. All right, Oli, this is the first time I've been on the ice in a long time, and I've never actually played hockey. So how do you hold the stick properly? Only one way to hold it. You gotta know if you shoot on your left or shoot on your right side. Right. So that's how you pick the stick. Your top hand goes always there. So that way, with the top hand, depending how long the stick gets, you can cover a lot of space. Your lower hand goes always down, up and down, up and down. So the curve would be the other way, but this is how I'd hold the stick. And ultimately, the other hand, the supporting hand, moves up and down based on how you need it. You know, Oli, let me try it your way. Let me see how it works. Yeah. Bottom right. there. I'll be right back. <laughs> it's 
For the person like me, who's been on skates every once in a while, but wants to learn to skate better, where do you start? Your knees should be pending like you go sit on the toilet. <laughs> so that should be the right All skating right. angle over here. All right. The way I teach my kids to yeah. skate, tap, 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 glide. Tap, 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 glide. Tap, 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 glide. Tap, tap, and you tap, can have tap. a slight knee bend uh, there. Tap, See, tap. You're getting better. There Look you at go. Me. With the knee bend, it gives you a little bit of speed. And more stability as you come lower, Absolutely, too. Absolutely, because then when you go low, yeah. someone comes right, and right. tries to take the puck away, pushes you, hits you. <laughs> the lower you are, more strength what, you're going to have. Center of mass. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. One more. Three, two, three. All right. There you go. Well, I'm still not only, but I'm going to keep working on it. You watch this. Woo. Don't go away just yet. When SoFlow Health returns, we'll have the answer to this question for you. How many pounds does the average hockey player lose in a game? Is it A, none, B, two to four pounds, or C, five to eight pounds? The answer, when we come back. Welcome back to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and before the break, we asked you, how many pounds does the average hockey player lose in a game? Is it A, none, B, two to four pounds, or C, five to eight pounds? If you said C, five to eight pounds, you'd be correct. Now, most of the weight that they lose is water weight, which is why they're so concerned with replenishing that water throughout the game. Now, even if you're not a professional athlete, it's a good idea to stay hydrated. That's all we have for this week. Thank you so much for joining us here on South Beach and every week. If you've missed any previous episodes or you'd like to catch up, you can go to SoFloHealth.com or YouTube and search SoFloHealth. You can also share with us what you're doing to stay healthy on at SoFloHealth on all social media platforms. And until next week, it's goodbye and good health. Next week on SoFlow Health, we update you on the progress of COVID-19 vaccines and Professor Produce tells you why those chickpeas we whipped up earlier are extra healthy for you. We'll see you then.